Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. Lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas, I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater. And tonight's film comes to us from the Philippines, and the highly respected Filipino director, Eddie Romero. Uh, no relation to Night of the Living Dead's George Romero. <laughs> In 2003, Eddie Romero was named the National Artist of the Philippines, for his work on films that explored the history, culture, and politics of his country. Tonight's film was made in 1971 and has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> Tonight, it's the devil made me do it shocker, the beast of the yellow knight. <laughs> this film is one of four horror films directed by Mr. Romero. The others being Terror is a Man, Mad Doctor of Blood Island, and the Twilight People. <laughs> um, look out for a bit of violence and gore in this movie, and um, if cannibalism bothers you, you may want to look away for a moment in this first segment coming up. You've been warned. <laughs> well, without further ado, I give to you the tale of a man who loses his soul to save his life, and what a surprise, he regrets it. <laughs> Here is the Beast of the Yellow Knight. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Griffin, and Mr. Morelli of the American Embassy. The bodies are being brought down. All dead? The man and the two children must have been killed instantly. The woman was still alive when they found her. A 
Обелиски на джаз. There is no fruit around here, no food crops, and nobody to help you. The mountain people have all been warned about it. Run, Langdon. Run if you can. Don't shoot. I'm not armed. What difference, Langdon? I'm sick. I'm dying. Langdon pleading for pity. Langdon the traitor. Langdon the murderer, rapist, thief. Langdon the evil man. They recognized evil man. Please. I'm too weak to try to run. I'll, I'll do anything you ask. Me. Just don't, don't kill me. What have you got to offer? <laughs> no. Please. No. I, I, I never made a hurt anybody. I'm scared. Kill me. It's not like a wild animal. I'm a human being. Just like you are. Shut up. Would you serve me, Langdon, without question, loyally for the rest of your life? No. I swear. No need for that. I always take a man at his word. You really are sick, you know. That fruit you just ate is extremely toxic. As a matter of fact, you should be dead. And it's a wonder you're not. Starving is such a wretched business, isn't it? Wretched, painful, dirty. Dirty. 
When was the last time you had some fresh meat to eat? Your friend isn't coming, Langdon. She died of bullet wounds a while ago, leaving a trail of canned beans and dried fish behind her. But then she wasn't really a friend, was she? In a way, though, she did come through for you. In a way. Come now, it's good meat. Probably better than anything you ever tasted. Eat, my boy. Eat. I know the movie is just starting. In fact, we haven't even seen the opening credits yet, but I'll bet he's going to regret eating that. I know that lady regrets trying to bring that evil guy some food, you know. She probably wanted to feed him out of the kindness of her heart, but um, I'm sure this isn't what she had in mind. If you're watching this, you must love horror, science fiction, B-movies, and weird tales. You can help spread that love by signing up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. There you can help support the production of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror and science fiction films ever made. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a podcast featuring chilling old-time radio horror shows best listened to in the dark. And Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, the kind of show kids in the 60s and 70s would run home from school to see, featuring classic science fiction heroes like Flash Gordon, Tom Corbett Space Cadet, Captain Z. Rowe, and many more. Plus, if you sign up, you'll have exclusive access to content available nowhere else, like Lord Bloodraw's B-movie reviews, radio episode commentaries, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. How much Jack do you think's in that strong box? Mm. There's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. Here's what happened. The general beat his friend Castro to the Cuban treasury. The strong box is now on this boat. So are a deported American gangster and his mall. And lurking in the depths is the creature from the haunted sea. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. Be calm, everybody. The boat's insured. We now return to Beast of the Yellow Knight, where we leave behind the year 1946 and move on to the opening credits.
O Lord, thou art God, your days are without end. Your mercy is too many to count. Cause us never to forget that our life is short and uncertain. Let your Holy Spirit lead us through this world in holiness and justice all the days of our lives. And after we have served you on earth in the comfort of our faith and in perfect charity to all men, may we joyfully come to your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you quite comfortable, Langdon? Leave me alone. I know just how you feel, my boy. Believe me, even I don't enjoy everything I have to do. But we have our rules, the same as everyone else. Can I have a moment's peace? Hardly. It's one thing to be melancholy, dear boy but quite another to be in name. I think you'll find this new situation quite interesting. In fact, I think I will too. Mr. Earl is here, Mrs. Yes, I'm ready. Dr. Porfirio Santos wanted in surgery B immediately. Dr. Porfirio Santos, please. Telephone call for Dr. Gorris at main lobby desk. Dr. Gorris, telephone call. Believe me, Mrs. Rogers, I'm as surprised and shocked as you are. There was not the slightest basis for suspecting that there was anything wrong. That is why I would like your permission to have an autopsy performed on the on your husband. I would like to see my husband. Of course. We haven't moved him from his room. I want to see his face. What happened to his face? Mangled beyond recognition in an industrial accident. He's had a number of operations. I've been helping here and there. Now, Landon. Just what the hell are you trying to pull, Doctor? Ask them for failure to come here immediately. Phil? Get these bandages off his face. But he can't be alive. You do it, right now.
ಆಗ್ತದಲ್ಲ I think I'm rediscovering the nicest part of the house. You never used to think that. You used to make a joke of all the trouble I went to having it done. Come sit by me. It's not too cold for you. No. You've had a pretty rough time of it, haven't you? I never expected you to say anything like that. I've been away a long time. You should expect to be surprised. I do. I don't know you anymore. Are you sorry? No. I've never been afraid of you before. You are getting chilly. Hey, lady, trust your instincts. That's not your husband who miraculously returned from the dead with his mangled face healed up. That's a servant of the devil taken over your husband's body for... not at all good things. I'd watch it if I were you. Yes, listen. A young girl just left here. Alone. Don't be frightened. We won't hurt you. Let me out. I'm afraid that is quite impossible. I need you. You need me? Yes. Impossible.
Now back to Beast of the Yellow Knight, where Joe Langdon, a disciple of the devil, has inhabited a new body. What's he going to do with it? Let's see. You might have given me some idea of what you were going to do. You were always a little squeamish or it would have showed. I see. It's a one-man operation now. Is that new to you? Well, not like this, Phil. These people were your partners. Sure, you've always had control, but they trusted you. They put their trust in figures and ironclad notes. And they came out of it a lot richer. And a lot greedier, too. Phil, I don't, I don't know that I want to go along with this. What do you really want, then? Peace of mind? A clear conscience? Why not? Have you got a clear conscience, Earl? What do you think I ought to do about Julia? I don't know what you mean. There aren't many women who could have stood by you all this time. You're right. You see, that's the point. Things aren't going to get any better. And there's not a thing that she or I can do about it. So what are you going to do? Just throw her out like your board of directors? Would you like that? All right, Phil. Come out with it. If you're implying that there's ever been anything between Julia and me... Earl, I'm just trying to make things easy for you. Easy? Easy. Julia knows what a disaster our marriage has been, but she's not the kind to let go or walk away. Principles. She's not going to just wake up one morning and realize that it's you she's wanted all along. If I threw her out, neither one of us would ever see her again. Why should you care? I don't want to hurt her any more than I have to. If she can make a good life for herself with you, why shouldn't she have a chance for it? So why don't you and I kind of help her along, Earl? Here's Tom Milton. Remember him? You inhabited him in 54. 55, I think. You know I can't for the life of me remember what I did with him. I'll have to look it up. Actually, Langdon, since I happen to be in the neighborhood, I thought I'd look you up and have a little therapy session with you. You know, bringing you back with your own face was an irresistible temptation. But it may turn out to be an awful mistake. What have I done? Nothing yet. But having a face of your own is encouraging you to think about personal identity. And you know we can't have that. I take no pleasure in it. Naturally not. But your mind wonders. Why do you think I keep bringing you back, Landon? Apart from the pleasure you get out of it. To awaken the latent evil in the people that I come in contact with. Good. I knew you'd be sharp enough to grasp that. It isn't as easy as it might seem to find qualified agents. Human nature is so ambiguous that the propagation of evil is left entirely to chance. There's been a great deal said about the scarcity of truly good men. Why, truly evil men are just as hard to find. Do you realize, Langdon, that if you really put your mind to it, you could be a saint? For our side, of course. Nothing seems worth doing. You want to die, is that it? Yes. What fantasies people pick up. This is all there is, you know. You have to stop thinking of yourself as a man groping towards some sort of fulfillment within a measured span of time, because surely you can see that you stopped being mortal some 20-odd years ago. What am I? 
Well, you're in transition. You're still part man, becoming, hopefully, a quality. A pure moral force, so to speak. I am a man. Damned, maybe, but still a man. Who knows shame and sorrow and revulsion and regret. idea how distasteful I find this. I wish there was some subtler and equally effective way of making a point with you. Do try to remember that. I find you quite useful, but I don't want you to be anybody. Not anybody at all. The pain you feel is only a slight pressure on the kidney. If you vex me further, I can be much more imaginative. Can I get you a drink? Earl stopped in this afternoon. I figured he would. He told me. He said you had to talk about me. Yes. What did you tell him? I think you know what I told him, Julia. Just what do you take me for? What was his attitude? I don't know what you mean. Did he seem interested in the idea? What was the point of telling him all those lies? What are you trying to do to me? About four months ago, you let an airline pilot pick you up at the Savoy Bar. Now, that bothered you a lot, didn't it? You hadn't spoken to me in months. You didn't care whether you lived or died. You didn't care what happened to me. How was I supposed to feel? Just the way you did feel, Julia. The trouble is, you've never been able to forgive yourself for it. How long have you known? What difference does it make? Philip, suddenly I don't understand you at all. Earl is as close to being what he seems to be as anyone you've ever known. With him, you'd never have to wonder where you stood. And that's what you've always wanted, isn't it? And it's not supposed to matter whether I love him or not. What do you want, Julia? Love, you've had. Why don't you settle for something you can live with? Who are you? As far as you're concerned, I am and can only be. Whoever, or whatever you think I am. Well, that's an ambiguous answer. It's, it's hardly an answer at all. But I guess he can't say, I'm an agent of Satan who hops from body to body to awaken the latent evil in the people I come in contact with especially this early in the movie. Uh, the actor playing the devil's errand boy there is John Ashley, who played teenagers into his 30s in films like How to Stuff a Wild Bikini and Beach Blanket Bingo. He went on to be quite a successful producer, with an associate producer credit on Apocalypse Now, and producer credits on TV shows like The A-Team and Walker, Texas Ranger. He also appeared here before in the Nerve Rackin' Theater in Frankenstein's Daughter and Attack of the Eye Creatures. Whew. Attack of the Eye Creatures. Talk about awakening latent evil. That it could happen in America. That it could happen now that it could ever happen to me.
the murder tonight. At Watergate. My apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I need you. I don't want to lose you. Whoever, whatever you are. What's the matter? Are you ill?
Philip? Is that you? Philip, let me in, please. I'm very tired, Julia. I'll talk to you later, all right? Is there anything wrong? No. There must have been some kind of weapon used. Nobody could have done that with his bare hands. I don't know, Lieutenant. Even a weapon has to be handled. What kind of a weapon would you need to rip out a man's heart with a single blow? You're not sure it was a single blow? I wouldn't swear to it, no. Not on something as mutilated as that. But I would guess he was hit no more than three times. Once on the head and twice across the body. With the force of a jackhammer. And that's not all. We picked up bits of tissue from his heart, lungs, digestive tract that looked as if they came out of a meat grinder. No. Well, how else can you explain the way he's been acting? All right. He's having a hard time fitting into things. Do you really think sending him away again will help him? I'm only suggesting that he needs psychiatric help. That amounts to the same thing. Don't you see? He needs us. He needs me. Not some stranger poking around in his mind the way they did with his body. He's all alone. And he doesn't want to beg for anything. That's why I said all those things to you yesterday. I wish that were true. It is true. Maybe he is lonely in a way. But I can't reach him. And I don't think you can. He's grown hard. Mean even. He can hurt you, Julia. And we can't risk that, can we? He's my brother. That's hard to believe, too. Julia, I'd make very sure of my own feelings if I were you. What? Why has he become so important to you? Only a week ago, you weren't sure you wanted to stay. What's he done to you? Or is it something that you've done to yourself? So now we're both dangerous. Nobody's harmless, even to himself. Are you sure you're helping him this way? No. Are you sure you're helping me? Did I wake you? I guess you did. I didn't hear you come in. Beware the Coloradans bearing gifts. What's the occasion? An attack of guilt, probably. I spent the entire day in dodging myself. Drove around, shopped, ate a fantastically expensive lunch, went to a movie. Open it. The cook says you haven't had anything to eat all day. You must be starved. Not really. Dinner should be about ready. I'll go see. Julia. Thank you. Hey, 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 enough of that. This is a family show. So, besides body hopping, Langdon is now shape-shifting? And it doesn't look like it's by choice. That can lead to some, uh, embarrassing situations. The artist. The poet. The figure model who loves to show it. His 
suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. All these are beat. All these you'll meet in a bucket of blood. Let us make the scene. Crazy. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Where the hilarious enjoy the horrifying in a bucket of blood. No, you're gonna shoot me, don't shoot! Come to the land of living dreams, where realists dream of the unreal. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. Beatniks at their bawdiest. The creative urge at its most primitive. I'm deeply moved. And I shall compose a poem. Love is art. Art is love. It's the weirdest and the wildest. I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. As we return to Beast of the Yellow Knight, Langdon, in the body of Philip, is having some uh, private time with his wife when, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Let me in. Go away, Julie. Go away for your own good. Philip, please let me in. Philip! Philip, please let me in. Oh, I 
Dale. Is that you? Who are you? What do you want here? If it's Mateo you're looking for, he won't be here till morning. And if you've come to steal, you're wasting your time. I know you're there. Are they looking for you? It's not a bad place to hide. Unless they saw you come in. What does it mean, Earl? Where is he? Operator, I'd like to call police headquarters, please. I'm assuming that this is still somewhere in this area. I've stripped eight precincts of every man they can spare. We've sealed off all possible exits from the district. We've started a house-to-house -house search. What about the army? They're on alert, but they won't come in until we ask for them. I'm not going to have a panic if we can help it. As you all know, no specific description of the fugitive has been issued, except for that he's male of medium build with a heavily scarred and mutilated face. Frankly, that's all I'm prepared to believe at this point. I thought you might want to look at these, sir. Pictures of a window in the house of Philip Rogers, a well-known American businessman. The man had an argument with his wife and locked himself in. Apparently. This is how he got out sometime during the night. Notice that there are no tool marks or abrasions of any kind on the iron bars. Which means that Rogers, or whoever bent those bars, did it with his bare hands. I'm making some soup. I can't offer you anything else. Mateo hasn't come in yet. I don't know him. I thought not. Why did you help me? The odor of blood was very strong on you when you came in last night. I can still smell it. I know it well. And that's why you helped me? I did not help. I just left you alone. 
I would do as much for a stray dog. You don't belong here. No. My nephew Mateo is the caretaker here. I'm just visiting him. Speaking of belonging, the police are liable to be here soon. And they may wonder what someone like you, a foreigner, is doing in a place like this. Yes, I guess they would. I see. What? That it makes little difference to you whether you are lost or saved. All you want is to make an end. No one is ever saved. You are an optimist. If things were as simple as that, there would be no need for life to run so long. Who are you? Who I am now is of no great interest to anyone. My name is Sabas Asnar. The bandit? You have a long memory. Yes. Sabas Asnar, the bandit. What's that name again? Sabas Asnar. I'm sorry? Sabas Asnar. Sabas Asnar? Sabas Asnar. Is, is that right? Sabas Asnar? Sabas Asnar. It can't be Sabas Asnar. Sabas Asnar. All right, I'm going to look it up on IMDb. Let's see, IMDb, Beast of the Yellow Knight, uh, full cast. Ah, and the blind man's name is Blind Man. Sabas Asnar. If you're watching this, you must love horror, science fiction, B-movies, and weird tales. You can help spread that love by signing up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. There you can help support the production of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror and science fiction films ever made. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a podcast featuring chilling old-time radio horror shows best listened to in the dark. And Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour the kind of show kids in the 60s and 70s would run home from school to see, featuring classic science fiction heroes like Flash Gordon, Tom Corbett Space Cadet, Captain Z. Rowe, and many more. Plus, if you sign up, you'll have exclusive access to content available nowhere else, like Lord Bloodraw's B-movie reviews, radio episode commentaries, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of of horror. From ancient Genesis to the modern screen, is the name written in blood, Ega! If I could just call you on the phone, the code of the ghost got the sign of the toad, nobody lives on the Brownsville Road. Thrill to the newest recording star, Arch Hall Jr. Oh, they scream in this way. See ravishing Marilyn Manning in a thrilling, chilling story. <laughs> the last of the prehistoric giants sees his first girl. Noah. And the cut. Curious newsmen search deep in giant country for the last of the ancient cavemen. See a tough giant tamed by the soft hands of his captive woman. See him sacrifice his ageless beard for her love. The loser to a boy in a dune buggy escaping a burning desert. Ega's primitive passion was love or kill. Here, Ega talk, the ancient language of love used at the beginning of time. Yeah. See, Ega. His 
name can't be Samadas Nat. That makes no sense. Oh, um, as we return to Beast of the Yellow Knight, Philip Rogers, a.k.a. the Devil's Gopher Joseph Langdon, a.k.a. the Beast of the Yellow Knight, has been befriended by a friendly blind man named... Samadas Nat. Nope, I refuse to accept that. It's got to be something... Ah! Here it is on obscure movie facts no one could possibly care about. His name is Sabasas Nan. Sabasas Nan. You know I still hear Sabasas Nan? They didn't hang you then? No. They kept me in prison for 30 years, hoping that I would die quietly. But after a while, it was no longer important. Only I remembered, and I remember as though it all happened yesterday. What about the others, the ones who followed you? Many of them are dead. The others believe I died long ago. It is better that they do. I do not have much time left. Time for what? To do what remains to be done. You two-faced old bastard. You haven't given up, have you? You're still rooting around for that blood-soaked soul of yours. You old fool, it's gone. And you'll never find it again if you live to be a thousand. You're quite wrong. That is the one thing we never lose. Not even if we long to be rid of it. And he who gave it to you remains forever part of it. That is why you are in such agony. Five years old, five feet nine inches tall, of medium build. I have nothing more to say. I'm interested in locating my husband, not in having him hunted down like a criminal. No one has even implied that he is one, Mrs. Rogers. But surely you can understand that we are obliged to take certain measures in the interest of public safety. We do want to find your husband, Mrs. Rogers. And perhaps it's in its best interest that we do. I'm not a complete fool, Inspector. Philip, where? London. Joseph London. I'm in no position to say. I never saw London when we shipped the old files back to the States years ago. Surely it must be possible to send his file back here with photographs. But what for, Inspector? Joseph Langdon is dead. Not only is that a matter of record, you were one of those who witnessed his death. I thought I did. I saw him hit. I saw him fall down a ravine a hundred feet high. Twenty-four years ago. The man you're holding is thirty-five. He wasn't even in his teens at the time. Just what are you trying to prove? I don't know. The man you have is Philip Rogers. He has personal records that go back to the day he was born. There's a perfectly valid explanation for his change in appearance. His wife, his brother, his friends all know who he is. On the other hand, even if Langdon were alive today, he'd be well over 50, and he wouldn't look at all like that. It just doesn't add up. Sorry to have wasted your time, Colonel. Not at all. You didn't say much in there. I'm not going to suggest that you should take a long rest if that's what you're driving at. Maybe I should. I never put much faith in hunches before. And I can't question the facts. Why am I so sure that that man is Joseph Langdon?
This is all so pointless, Landon. Let me die, then. I can't. And won't. Look at it this way. I have commitments that go back to the beginning of time. To hell with that. My life is all I'll ever know of time. Do what you like with me. I'm not afraid of you anymore. What incredible arrogance. Just who do you think you are? What makes you think you can ever get away from the man who placed his soul at my feet in trade for a bag full of rotting meat? You gave me the idea. You said I was still becoming and I had a choice. It was a mistake, but not a disastrous one. I've been making things easy for you. I've given you something to resist, haven't I? A convenient scapegoat for these recent transports of self-indulgence. Well, no more, Langdon. The next time you have a transformation, it will be entirely your doing. Do bear that in mind. You will not have another one unless you bring it on yourself. Pinapayagan namin makauwi ang taong yan sapagat wala kaming may harap na sakda laban sa kanya. Pinitya ko sa inyo kapag siya ay sinakta ninyo ay lalo lamang lalaki ang gulo at yan ay hindi ko mapapayagan. Bigyan na daan. Get a doctor quick. No, I'm not hurt. I'm okay. Rogers, I'll call you. Where are we going? You're not going back to the house. Why not? Oh, Philip, it wouldn't be safe. You saw those people back there. They've already convicted you. Hiding isn't going to do me any good, Julia. Well, anything's better than just sitting in that house waiting. Earl found a place in a quiet part of town. We can stay there for a while. We're leaving the country, Philip. Was this your idea, Earl? No. I'll go along with whatever you want. It was my idea. 
Earl made the arrangement. Tomorrow night, we're driving out to Corvana across the bay. There'll be a fishing boat waiting for us. I won't let them take you, Philip. I've waited too long for you. What do you make of this? Where does the other end go? It dumps into the ocean. It looks exactly like the South American Fantigua fish. I hope you can take one alive, Sheriff. I still believe that a human clawed that girl to death. The Beach Girls and the Monster. Starring John Hall, Sue Casey, and the glamorous Watusi dancing girls from Hollywood's famed Whiskey A Go-Go nightclub. Music by Frank Sinatra, Jr. You got a monster in the turf. Chicks, do you have a problem? You won't have after you meet the monster on the beach. If you see this ghoul, play it cool. Beauties in bikinis, laughing, singing, surfing, sinning. Beach party lovers making hey hey in the moonlight while the monster waits and watches. Yeah, 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 this one will kill you. What do you make of it? Oh, probably the smart thing to do would be to forget it altogether. By the way, we decided not to book the man who owns that. He won't leave. Who was Joseph Langdon? A U.S. Army deserter, convicted of collaborating with the Japanese while a prisoner of war in World War II. Also of torturing and informing on his comrades in arms. He escaped from the American stockade here and joined some native wartime contacts in the mountains. But he was too much even for them. Murder, pillage, rape, very often for no comprehensible reason. Finally, he was alone. We tracked him down and killed him. Or so we thought. His body wasn't recovered. No. He was hit at least a half dozen times and fell off a high cliff into a river. We had divers looking for his body for almost a week, but they found nothing. I wonder what he was like. Educated, soft-spoken. It was very hard to dislike him if you knew nothing about him. But there was a hard, cold hatred inside him, which no one could account for. Or bother to. After our meeting with the military attaché the other day, I went to see a friend at Army Intelligence. He dug this up for me. <coughs> Inspector De Santos here. Yes, Mr. Rogers. We have been waiting to hear from you. Are they still in the house? I left them less than an hour ago. Inspector, I hope you understand my position. Your brother and Mrs. Rogers will not know of our presence here, unless some imminent danger to either or both of them arises. I'm rather concerned about Mrs. Rogers. So are we. Come on.
should be asleep. You won't be much help if you don't get some rest. Will you stay with me, Philip? Will you promise not to leave me? You shouldn't have waited for me. There was nothing left to wait for. I did think that. Then you came back and changed everything. There's no such thing as a dead end. You can always get out. The way you came. You didn't. You came back to me. And you kept coming back. To use you. <laughs> That's just another way of saying that you need me. That's all I want, Philip. That you need me as much as I need you. Two men outside and follow him. Keep your distance. Don't try to take him. But find out where he goes and report to me. Yes, sir. Julia? Julia needs a nice long rest. She's been through a lot. And uh, speaking of going through a lot, we have to go to commercials now. Oh, there she goes. Tremulous trailers. Attempting to solve the distance of a beautiful girl, the East Side kids invade a haunted mansion and come face to face with sinister Bella Lugosi. The kids take the first round. But that's only the beginning of this terrifying night.
You did not tell me that you had a visitor around here some nights ago. It was nobody of any importance. It was the American killer. The police let him go today for lack of evidence. But you know he was here that night, don't you? It was of no importance. No? Ruben and his cousin saw him leaving with dried blood all over his clothes. He's a rich man. How much did he give you to keep quiet? He gave me nothing. He was tired and needed a place to sleep. You old liar. I took you in when no one would have you. I let you stay, gave you whatever food and money I could spare. Me, with a sick wife and four children to worry about. He gave me nothing. It wouldn't help you to be stubborn, old man. Who is it? Who's out there? Speak up! He won't hurt you. Get away from there! He needs me. Please, Mateo, let him in. No, leave him alone. He means no harm. He's just afraid, like you. He won't give you away. I promise you. I promise you. Mrs. Rogers, it's imperative that we know as much about your husband as you can tell us. It's imperative that we know what happened last night. Did he say anything that might help us locate him? I'm sorry, Inspector. I can't permit you to continue. You let us know as soon as her condition improves? Yes, but I cannot tell you when that will be. I'll come by and see her again before I leave. I'd get some rest if I were you, Mr. Rogers. I'm okay. Is he dead? No. He's breathing easily, but he's badly hurt. You better get a doctor. Yes, I was just waiting for you to change. You know. What will you do? I don't know. I'm tired of running, but it's all I can do. They can't kill me. What is your name? Joseph Langdon. My name is Joseph Langdon. You have a name? and a face. You speak, you think, and there is an awful pain inside you. Whatever else you might be, you are still a man. There is a clinic nearby. 
I'll bring a doctor here. Stay out of sight when I come back with him. What for? I will help you find a place to hide for a while until you know what you must do. It's no good. Somebody tried to help me once. I destroyed her. You cannot harm me. You see, I want nothing from you. Don't worry. They won't see us. We are too big to notice. I have a good feeling. I think I'll have a better day today than I have had in a long time. Hello. Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity search. Ah, uh, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for all you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred uh, by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is... Jack, would you please quit scratching the palms of your hands? It's just not manly. Ha <laughs> ha! Which 1970s werewolf film is that line from? Jack, would you please quit scratching the palms of your hands? It's just not manly. Was it from A. The Beast Must Die B. The Werewolf of Washington C. Werewolves on Wheels or D. Dr. Jekyll and the werewolf. Ha <laughs> ha! Jack, would you please quit scratching the palms of your hands? It's just not manly. Ha <laughs> ha! Which 70s werewolf movie is that line from? We'll find out after these completely gender neutral but annoying commercials. Larry! From the exotic geisha houses of Tokyo to the back alleys of the Ginza Strip comes the terrifying news of a fiendish creature that threatens to destroy all who stand in his way. This is the frightening story of an American reporter in Tokyo who unwittingly became the victim of a shocking scientific experiment that turned him into a horrible mutant. Half man, half monster. The Manster! Got away. I think I know where he's going, to Taurus. Follow me. Right. There's panic in the streets as the unheard of terror of a half-man, half-monster runs wild through the city. There he goes! Don't miss The Manster. A genuine thriller in the most frightening sense of the word. And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. Jack, would you please quit scratching the palms of your hands? It's just not manly. Which 70s werewolf movie is that line from? It was... B. The Werewolf of Washington. <laughs> yes, The Werewolf of Washington. The 1973 political horror spoof that's a favorite here in the Nerve Rackin' Theater. 
The film stars Dean Stockwell as a Washington reporter who is transferred to Transylvania and, well, you can guess the rest. But if you haven't seen The Werewolf of Washington, see it. It's a very fun watch. <laughs> and now, on to the conclusion of The Beast of the Yellow Knight, where Langdon and his blind companion, Sabasas Nan, Sabasas Nan. Yeah, that's what I said. Are trapped by a military roadblock. What will they do? Describe space to me, quickly. There's a hill to the right of us. Tall grass to the left. The road turns left on the side of the hill. Walking to the grass now. You can't come with me. You will never find your way out of here. I will be your eyes. Do what I tell you, now! to get themselves up. If we wait any longer, we lose them.
take me to him. No. Langdon. Langdon. Pray for me, Langdon. Cowardless, nivelling fools. I accept forgiveness of no one. No one. I alone am answerable for what I am. I will not serve. But I also am. And will not be overcome. Well, Langdon redeemed himself in the end. Of course, the devil didn't because, well, you know, the whole devil thing. Uh, the producers of this film made a distribution deal with a fledgling film company that would go on to shake the world of independent film. That company was Roger Corman's New World Pictures. Ha <laughs> ha! This was the fourth film distributed by that legendary company which would go on to produce such independent classics as Death Race 2000, Hollywood Boulevard, Eat My Dust, and far too many others to count. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. <laughs> as always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.